Good evening all and welcome. There are some chilling things housed in our closets, so let's find out what. Don't forget that I'm now on Spotify, Apple Music and pretty much everywhere else. So if you'd like to check me out on those platforms, a link can be found in the description. But for now it's time to get comfortable and let the darkness take control. I was in my early 20s and lived alone in an apartment complex in a rougher part of Houston. It sat alongside an elementary school which helped, but it still wasn't an area I would go walking around at night in. It was a leaky apartment and I do have a mold allergy, something that I've not ruled out. I also have a history of extremely morbid nightmares and night terrors paired with an overactive and obsessive imagination. However, this was right before these routines became issue for me, and I did not take any kind of drugs including alcohol during this time. But I can remember when the nightmares started. It was the same one over and over again. I was always in the first person view, like from my own eyes, so I never knew what I looked like, and I wasn't in control because it always played out like a movie. But I was in an empty apartment and jumped by a dark figure stabbed multiple times, and I distinctly remember staring down at my bloody blue jeans and worn white tennis shoes as I was being dragged, leaving a blood trail on the beige carpet, as well as the strange squishy noise the knife made when it went in and out erratically, almost pulling bits out of my chest with each attempt. I was tied up, unwrapped up, and eventually propped against the wall. Once the dark figure turned off the light and shut the door, I woke up every single time. I have a specific way of dreaming, and this wasn't it. I would wake up deeply disturbed and unable to fall back asleep. Once I was able to fall asleep, I would have it once or twice more, and figured I was just overly stressed. I had started a new job and also having just ended a toxic relationship that was causing some residual drama in my life. About four or five days in, the nightmares were still occurring. They were getting worse in the sense that I would wake up holding my chest, almost able to feel the stabs in my dreams. It was at that point I began feeling a dark presence in the room with me, to the point of being too afraid to get up and turn on the light or leave the room at all as if I were being watched. This is the point at which I started talking to my friends about it. It was affecting my sleep, and I was showing up to work extremely tired, vocalizing my bizarre experience to people close around me and even to my new management. Around the sixth or seventh day, I was feeling a dark presence constantly in the apartment, even in the daytime. I had also moved into the living room and started sleeping on my futon since I had started waking up from those nightmares and seeing a dark form against my bedroom wall that was about six feet tall with no figures, just darkness, and hearing a masculine get me out repeatedly somewhere between sleep and waking. It was also about this time there was a smell growing in the apartment. It was faint and hard to describe, like a pile of rotting fish mixed with dog crap and the nasty sweetness of old fruit, but faint. I thought it was the mold or common sewer problems in the area or a bad tenant. Samson was a kitten at the time and would often appear spooked or puffed up, hissing and running out of the bedroom. I thought it was normal kitten behavior, like he was practicing his little lion skills. I never even thought it was strange how he would sleep against my chin under the covers with me. This may have been the case, but his behavior was unusual. The people close around me encouraged me to seek professional help. I wasn't sleeping and experiencing fluctuations in my mood and performance. I was also feeling depressed. I would jokingly call what I was going through a morbid quarter-life crisis before finally agreeing to talk to a professional about it. The first and only place I went to was my general doctor. He concluded that I was experiencing generalized anxiety and under tremendous stress. I was provided with some resources and referrals for therapy for a more thorough assessment and followed my appointment with a 10-hour shift at work. 
When I got home from work, there were emergency lights all over my parking lot. I noted caution tape along the stairway on the opposite side of my apartment as I drove around my parking spot. I had to maneuver around a news station van to get up the stairs into my apartment, and I caught words like murder and unidentified victim before retreating inside. Since most of the activity was on the other side of my building, I sat outside on my balcony to watch and listen but didn't gather much. I slept well that night. No night terrors, no nightmares. Surprising, since I was experiencing anxiety over what I had gathered the night before. But I was also exhausted, and maybe meeting with a professional had eased my mind. I woke up by a phone call from a close friend who had texted me the night before. She was familiar with the troubles I had been having and was freaking out with the details she'd gathered about the incident. An unidentifiable male suspect drug trafficker had taken residency in one of the apartments, and they were found stabbed to death in an apartment closet, tied up and wrapped in a trash bag, lower jaw removed. The body was found after the tenants living directly below reported a strong, foul odour and fluid leaking through their ceiling, which was actually blood. As for the closet the body was found in, it shares the same wall as my bedroom that I was seeing the dark personage on. Everything immediately returned to normal. I was sleeping again, and the feeling around the apartment was much lighter. Due to tenants' law and such, I was allowed out of my lease early due to the recent events, and it was an offer I took without question, promptly moving to a slightly less crappy apartment a few miles away. I tried to logically explain this to myself for years, only sharing it with a few people for a long time. I figured that it was some sort of chemical reaction, some primal trigger, the smell of a decomposing body causing something to fire off in my brain that there was danger. The specifics of my nightmare, the dark personage against the wall at night, and the sense of overall someone watching me are things I have not been able to explain away. It was as if the lingering ghost of the person killed was reaching out to me sharing their cruel fate with the person closest to them in proximity, whether it be to mourn them or to just be aware that they were gone and move past this, I will never know. This weird thing happened to my sister over 10 years ago now. She and her husband are house-sitting for my brother-in-law's uncle. The uncle is old and starting to lose it, and he rents out a basement suite, and a nice lady lives downstairs. She cleans the house when she's there, but he wanted my brother-in-law to come check out a few things and feed his old cat once in a while. The first day they get to the house, they get in but can't find the cat and want to make sure it's okay. My sister has cats and know they like to hide when they're going to die, so they are all worried and are looking frantically for this cat in all the rooms, under the beds and everything. Even check with the lady downstairs who hasn't seen it. So my sister opens up the closet in the spare bedroom and is looking around stuff on the floor, moves a few things and sees a set of feet on the ground in the closet, with clothes blocking anything above the feet. The feet have nice painted toenails and look human. She assumes it was a doll or something and they look in a few more places and all of a sudden the cat is in the middle of the living room just hanging out. So they lock the deadbolt and leave. My sister and her husband go out for dinner and a movie, and she can't stop thinking about the feet and how real they looked. My sister had started dating her husband, who was her boyfriend then, fairly recently, and didn't want to seem crazy, so she didn't bring it up. But a few hours into the night, she decides she needs to tell him. He decides it's probably a doll, but he offers to go back and check anyway. When they arrive, my sister will only stay on the patio because she was afraid, which makes him realize this must be something serious. They go get in the door, but the deadbolt is now unlocked and so's the handle. He thinks there must be someone in there. 
At the door there is a fireplace, so once he's in he grabs the sharp poker stick and starts to sneak towards the closet. He opens the closet and sees the same set of feet with painted toenails on the floor. He pokes it lightly with the fire stick and the toes scrunch up. He proceeds to smack the foot as hard as he can with the sharp stick. Out comes a lady in her mid-thirties holding the cat and a can of coke. Turns out she was friends with the basement tenant. When she became homeless, the friend let her stay with her until she found out she was addicted to crack. Started leaving drugs around the house and had shady people coming to the house so she was kicked out. Somehow she got a key to upstairs and had been staying there while the uncle was gone. The police were called and she was arrested. I went to school at a small, private women's college in Pennsylvania. It was a pretty campus in the middle of a reasonably urban environment. A few of the dorms and admit buildings had been specifically built for the college. Most were carved out of the old mansions that had been donated by wealthy industrialists, as the area was something of a cluster of millionaires' mansions. My junior year, I was hoping to live with my two friends, Marsha and Selena. I was never very lucky with the housing lottery, but Selena was. Her luck held, and we were early enough to get a huge triple with a walk-in closet and a powder room. There was even a regular closet for me. I was never very tidy, and the other two girls were glad to keep my mess contained. One Sunday night earlier that semester, I'd been dragged to a late mass in the chapel by a friend who was far more religious than I was. I was raised Catholic, but as soon as I left my mother's house I switched to agnostic and stopped attending mass completely. I was devout compared to Selena, who fancied herself a bit of a Wiccan, and Marcia who didn't recognize it unless it was part of the physical world and tangible. As a result of my unplanned excursion, I found myself behind on a paper due early the next day. As this was not uncommon, I was typing away while Marsha and Selena went to bed in preparation for their 8am class. We all had a small lamp for late nights, just enough light to finish a last minute assignment. I said my goodnights, promising that I'd turn the light out soon. One of my quirks since I was a kid was an inability to sleep in a room with any doors open. Selena used to give me crap, but they were both used to me checking the door lock, my closet door, the bathroom and the walk-in closet door before I settled in for the night. It's a thing from when I was a kid and believed something lived inside closets. Some book about the bogeyman I read when I was far too young, surely. That night, once I had finished my homework, I used the bathroom did my little path of door checking and then climbed into bed, yawning and tired. I fell asleep quickly and felt like I began daydreaming immediately. I've been burdened by the ability to remember dreams in general, and this is definitely cooler when it's a badass action sequence involving me zooming around in winged sandals than when I'm watching my boyfriend fall in love with other girls or I'm lost in the middle of a forest. That night I was standing in the middle of the walk-in closet, no clothes to be seen, faced with a black shadow hanging from the ceiling. It was 15 years ago and I can still remember the weird quality of the darkness. I couldn't explain it until recently, when I saw Vanta Black paint. I recognized the same quality of velvet dark that absorbs any light it touched. It moved silently down, vaguely humanoid, but the neck tilted too far to the side. In my dream, I backed up, feeling waves of what I can only describe as evil. I've never been in the presence of something that felt so tainted and ugly before or since. As I backed away, it followed, extending a hand and beckoning me forward with its finger. I knew that if it touched me, something bad would happen and I backed up till I hit the door. I woke up gasping wanting to scream but couldn't make more than a squeak. I was frozen in place either by the dream or by the sheer force of the evil. It was probably only a minute but I finally rolled over onto my side. The headboard of my bed 
was against the wall where the walk-in closet was, and it was about four feet away from the closet door. It sounds like such a non-issue, if it wasn't for my habit of checking the doors. You see, the closet door, in real life, was wide open. Not a crack. Not something that could have happened from a draft and an unlatched door. No. Wide open. It was the only time that ever happened in nine months. And I'm glad it was only the once. This happened when I was a kid. My family and I lived in North Carolina in a house surrounded by woods, and there were only a few neighbors around us. Every once in a while during the night at around midnight, I would lay in bed because I couldn't sleep. I felt a creepy vibe like something or someone was watching me. There'd be times where I'd hear footsteps coming from the attic above my bedroom. It sounded like someone was walking around. I went outside my bedroom into the hallway and everyone in my family was sleeping and their doors were closed. So I went back to my bedroom and closed my door. I was laying in my bed again and heard the footsteps in the attic. Then I heard something fall in my closet. I was so scared that I ran into my parents' bedroom and woke them up. They were confused at first, but then I just explained to them what I heard. My mum and dad said it was probably just my imagination and they didn't believe me. They walked me back to my bedroom and looked around my bedroom, and then they went inside my closet. There was a board game that had spilled all over the closet floor. It was at the back of the shelf at the top of my closet, so there was no way it could have just fallen without someone pushing it off. My parents helped me clean it up and put it back on the shelf. They said there was nothing to be scared of, and then they put me back to bed. They went back to bed too, and after a few minutes after they left, I heard someone whispering something. It sounded like they were calling my name. Then I saw a shadow that looked like a person walking across the wall by my closet. I thought it was a ghost, and I started freaking out again, so I grabbed my pillow and blanket and went to sleep on my parents' bedroom floor. After that, I slept on their floor for a few more nights. Eventually, I went back to sleeping in my bedroom, and when I would lay in bed again at around midnight, I still would hear the footsteps in the attic and that continued every once in a while until we eventually moved away. To this day, I still don't know who or what it was, but it still scares me. I'm 30 now, and this happened when I was in 7th grade. I woke up really randomly one school night for seemingly no apparent reason. I was sweaty and just remembered being jolted awake. I looked over at my alarm clock, seeing that it was about 2am. To the right of my alarm clock in my windowless room was a big walk-in closet. The light of the alarm clock illuminated my room just enough to where I could see that the closet door was wide open. Being older than my brother who I shared a bunk with, I naturally went to bed later than him and always made sure this door was closed. I always liked doors being closed day or night whether I was playing video games or trying to sleep. Just an OCD tendency of a 13-year-old me, nothing more. Standing in this doorway was a tall, red, pointy-hooded figure. No face or discernible features, just a tall, red thing standing in the walk-in closet facing me. I noticed this thing and immediately froze in fear. When I finally summoned the courage to move, I hid myself under my Spider-Man blanket. I didn't know what to do. I was scared to wake up my little brother who was sound asleep in the top bunk for fear that this thing may react to that by hurting him. So I hid and waited. For four agonizing hours, I had already been sweating, hiding under the blanket in fear, and it just made matters worse. The only relief of the heat I had was to poke my head out from under the blanket, but with that thing just facing me, it was hardly worth it. I waited and waited. At around 6.30am my alarm went off and I stayed under that blanket, didn't budge. Being a usually heavy sleeper, my alarm was a shrill, default sound, as to wake me up. 
This made my predicament all the more unnerving. Finally, at around 6.45, my mum came and flipped the light switch on and told us to get up. It was gone. The closet door remained open, and I hoped to God to see a red shirt or something of the sort hanging from the closet door, but there was nothing. I was drenched in sweat, and had to lie and tell my mum I pissed myself, which was incredibly humiliating. I couldn't tell her the truth. I never did see the red hooded figure again. I'm 30 now, agnostic and very sane, but still I will swear on everything I love regarding what I saw that day. I've told three people about this and they're all skeptical. Must have just been a movie you saw, and other theories like that. It's been so long since this happened, and I've had plenty of time to think about it seeing as I remember it so vividly. There seems to be no logical explanation for this happening, but it did, and that is my story. For years, my sister claimed there was a ghost in her closet, and of course no one believed her. Why would we? We shared a wall between our rooms. The wall with the closet. But every night, I'd hear her for hours sliding her hangers back and forth, trying to decide tomorrow's outfit. She's quite anal, so this is normal behaviour for her. I always forgot to mention in the morning how obnoxious it was. Until one morning, I actually remembered, and she insisted it wasn't her, it was the ghost in her closet. It never hit me until then. I think she was telling the truth. We moved from the city to a big house in a quiet suburban neighborhood when I was five. My parents bought the house from the widow of a very successful garment industry executive. He had the house custom built for his wife, and she had the entire thing professionally decorated where every room was a different theme. This made for a very interesting childhood with lots of discoveries. Within a few days of moving in, my parents found two very strange books hidden in the crawl space above their closet. The first was a small address book with the names and addresses of prominent Jewish gangsters from the 40s and 50s. The other was a notebook containing detailed information on animals, mainly dogs and cats. Maybe there were someone's pets. But my mother had always felt it had something to do with sacrifice as there were pentagrams drawn and incantations written with dates. Both books were burnt in the fireplace by my father shortly after uncovering them. Those things are unrelated to this story, but just a strange detail of the home we grew up in. The story isn't about me either, it's about my older brother, Jason. He was the oldest of three, and six years my senior and four years older than my sister. My parents divorced when he was a teenager in the mid-1980s, and at that point all bets were off for my brother. My mum is very going and hippie-ish, but my father always laid down the law. With him out the house, he now had the freedom to do as he liked. This was the start of satanic panic, heavy metal Dungeons and & Dragons, and the Commodore 64 computer, and my brother embraced all of it. He was a classically trained and naturally gifted artist before all of this. He regularly won contests with his art and it hung around the house as well as our schools and principals offices. He attended art school twice a week, but once he got into heavy metal and D&D, &D, his interests shifted. He grew his hair long and his circle of friends began to change. They went from nerdy computer kids to heavy metal heads in motorcycle jackets and Iron Maiden t-shirts. They would often be over the house when I came in from school and could always smell what they had been up to. It was one of his new friends that would change our perception of reality and ideas about life and death. His name was Ed. He was a strange looking guy, a short eccentric an odd boy by all accounts, yet very nice at the same time. He would ride a unicycle 
and regularly carry a Ouija board with him everywhere he went. He carried it back beneath a long, black trench coat. What gave Ed credibility in our eyes was the way he used the board. He would only use one hand barely touching it, and in a flat, emotionless tone, he would recite the words being spelled out. The planchette would move around so fast and deliberately, it was hard to even see what it was spelling out. To me, seeing that as a little kid and not really understanding, it was just so spooky. One night shortly after our uncle took his life, our cousins were over and Ed was too. He knew no one there other than my brother, nor did he know any of the details of my cousins losing their father. We were in my brother's room and within a few minutes he made contact with him. Ed, who had never met my cousin before, said, Larry, I have a message for you. John says he's at peace in purgatory now and to take care of your mum and sister. He said a few more personal things that my cousin thought were profound because Ed could have never have known any of them. My cousin began crying and asked, how do I know it's even really you? Ed replied, how about a picture? Maybe a headshot? This rocked my whole family in that room. You see, my uncle took his life by placing the nozzle of the gun on his temple. Even crazier still is that response was precisely his brand of dark humor and something he'd totally say. They were all reduced to tears, including my mother, who only came in to see why everything got so quiet. Ed became a regular guest at our house for a while, and the happenings became more and more strange, but it would all eventually come to a head for my brother. You see, one particular weekend, my sister and I were with our dad and my mother was away. So my brother had the house to himself. He said he had a few friends over and they were playing computer games in the basement. And next to the computer desk was the door to a large cedar closet. This is where my mum kept all of our seasonal clothes and all of her better clothing. For the most part, no one really went in there and the door was always closed anyway. There were three people there when the lights went out in the basement. Everyone froze in place. Then, the door to the cedar closet slowly began to rattle. It was pitch dark so they didn't know where the noise was coming from at first, and then it got louder, a crescendo getting more intense, and someone lit a lighter. The rattling became banging, as if something was trying to escape. My brother said it looked like that heavy wooden door was going to burst from its hinges and to this day he's convinced that something huge was on the other side of the door that night. The three of them ran up the stairs, tripping over each other in the dark and out the front door. When my mother came home the following afternoon, the front door was still wide open and my brother was nowhere to be found. Eventually he turned up and told her what they had experienced the night before. She must have believed him because they had the house blessed shortly after. We all saw, felt, and experienced things in that house that could never be explained, but none of it was scary or evil to me. My takeaway from growing up there was that sometimes people themselves are haunted. Maybe it's the way they interact with places that draws out different energies and projects them on that person. I live in Western Ohio. This happened three years ago in an old house in the middle of the country. I usually dealt with hearing noises in the middle of the night and feeling like someone was watching me, but one time was different. I woke up in the middle of the night and checked my phone which read 3.34 am. I turned my phone off and began to wonder why I had woken up when I noticed a pair of eyes in my slightly opened closet. I thought it was my brother messing with me, so I shouted his name expecting laughter, but received no reply. I shouted louder, but again no reply, and eventually it got too loud and my mum came in furious. When I explained, she said my brother was in his room playing video games, and my heart dropped, but I played it off as being tired and hallucinating. 
So after she left, I rolled over facing my wall. But as soon as I did that, I heard my closet door swing open and something run out of the room. I was terrified and ran. I followed the noise to the end of the hallway and it vanished into thin air. Whatever it had been was gone. I was very scared so I returned to the room. I never saw the eyes or heard anything like that again. It was like all the paranormal experiences just ceased. But all in all, I'm happy I never saw it again. And I hope that no one or myself crosses paths with it. This was about two years ago. I lived in a townhouse in a pre-suburban area. There were three fields surrounding it. I was home alone and it was pretty late at night. My mom and her boyfriend were up north for the weekend and was making some food when I heard strange noises like banging on the walls. I brushed it off because I have nosy neighbors, but I was really paranoid so I texted my neighbor and asked if they were home. They weren't. I began freaking out. I'm home alone, my neighbors aren't either and it's two in the morning. The banging noises got louder and it sounded like it was coming from the basement. Perhaps it was the washer, so I calmed down a little and went down into the basement slowly to see if it was just the laundry. Turns out it wasn't on. When I realized that I looked around the area and left the basement quickly, panic rushing back to me. I just went to my room forgetting about my food and sat on the bed and ended up laying down. Just so that you know I have the master bedroom in the house and two closets. One is a regular closet and the other a walk-in. My walk-in closet has a light bulb, the light barely works. But anyway, out of the corner of my eye, I see that the light is on in my closet, which was really weird. As I mentioned, it didn't work. So I approached the closet door and gingerly opened the door. And the moment I did that, the light shut off. But in the lingering darkness, I could make out a tall, skinny figure standing at the very back. I closed the door really fast. I felt like screaming, but I didn't. And I ended up going outside for a while and sat on a bench outside my house. I didn't know if I was seeing things or if I really just saw something I couldn't explain. A few days later, I saw the dark shape again hovering over my bed. I couldn't move. I told my mum about it and she told her friend who used to live in the same apartment I'm now in and used the same room as me. She told me she had a similar experience and also experienced sleep paralysis. My closet light has been flickering more than usual. Perhaps whatever it is, is angry. My parents divorced when I was young. When I turned 10, my dad remarried and moved into a new house about two years later. He moved on really quick. His new house was a rancher built in the late 70s in a quiet court. I moved in with my dad and stepmom when I was 18. So my stepmom and dad had been there for a few years without me and I didn't experience anything. My sister, six years younger, would stay with us twice a week and every other weekend. We both had our own rooms and the house was set up like a regular household. Everyone had their own room. There was a sitting room with a finished basement, numerous pictures of everyone on the walls throughout the house. My dad and stepmom did a great job of trying to make our two family life feel normal. And this is when things get weird. My room and my sister's room shared a wall. Our closets were back to back. The last week of each month, usually when my sister was staying with us, there would be loud scratching going up and down our shared wall, deep. It got to the point where I could tell when it was going to happen. It would start at what sounded like in the wall in the basement below our rooms and work its way up to our floor moving back and forth on the shared wall in our closet. The basement was an area I would stay and hang out in the most. I was a waiter at the time and would come home late after finishing a shift in our side door entering the basement to not wake up my dad or stepmom. 
I could never sleep down there, ever, and would always get an uneasy feeling being down there for more than an hour. Well, the last night this scratching happened, the most intense time, items on my dresser were shaking, as my dresser was against the same wall, and pictures on my wall fell off. My two guitars were hanging on the wall and they fell right off in front of my door, almost landing in front of it as if to block me from leaving. I got out my rosary and began praying right away, and after doing that I felt less scared. I turned on the TV and the nightlight and fell asleep. My sister was a heavy sleeper like I was, and was never woken up by this. After her weekend visit was over, she went back to my mum's house where she officially lived. My mum messaged me a few days later saying she was acting different, and her laugh and sometimes her voice were too. It had a deeper tone, and she was using extremely offensive language which wasn't like her. The very next week, my sister was admitted to a mental institution for threatening to harm herself. My stepmom is an atheist, and my dad is somewhat of a non-believer. But my mum is very religious and spiritual like I am. I've always been somewhat sensitive to experiences, but this was the only super negative experience like this. Eleven years later, my sister has gone through a wide variety of therapists and been on different medicines to help her mental state. She's becoming more and more like her old self. I know certain things like to pry on the weak-minded, at the time she was 13, going through a split household, puberty and about to start high school. And I'm not sure if what happened was demonic, or simply just an overwhelm of emotion, etc. I was six years old when my family of six moved into the brown house. As kids, we always named our houses by colour or location. It was easier, we moved a lot. The house seemed perfect at first. All four of us kids got our own rooms, we lived near friends and were walking distance to school. My older sister had a room that had a specific spot where the ceiling came down at a weird angle and had a small crack in it. My room was at the end of the hallway and was huge. Two sides of the room had cruel space cupboards big enough for some extra storage and for me and my younger brother to play in. However, it had a closet as well. In that closet, on one of the walls, was a crayon scribble drawing of a monster. That's what we thought anyway. The whole house had some eerie vibe to it, but not so much you'd notice it all the time. One day, my brother and I were playing hide and seek in my room, and he ended up having a seizure in the closet with the monster, his first one, and to this day, I believe the only one he had at this house. Sometime later, my brother and I snuck into my older sister's room. She had a computer and we wanted to play Oregon Trail. Yes, black screen green animation, that's how old I am. And we got a weird feeling. We both looked at the crack in her wall and decided somehow that there were people living in that crack and that we should write notes to place them and push them through the wall. Yeah, weird, right? A five and six year old scribbling on paper and thinking people live in the wall. But we kept this up the entire time we lived there. Once, my brother and I were playing in the cruel space cupboard thing, playing with our new imaginary friends, and once we came out of there, our hands, and only our hands, were covered in blue ink. So these friends we dubbed the blue people. Now onto the scary thing. One night I had been sleeping in my room, and I remember waking up suddenly because I heard something. I sat upright in bed for a few minutes looking around and didn't see anything. But then out of the corner of my eye I see something move. I looked directly at the closet, something was there, something. Slowly, a black shadow on the ground started to appear at the base of the closet door and after a few seconds I realised what it was. A hand, black as night. A few seconds later it started to come out even more, as an arm. And as soon as I saw that, the beginning of a head, I jumped out of bed and booked it downstairs to my parents' room. I was screaming that someone was in my room and crying. My dad jumped up as fast as he could, grabbed something big to bring with him. It was all a blur. 
Was it a huge flashlight, a bat? He searched the whole room, made all the other kids get up and search their rooms, and we all ended up sleeping in their room. Ever since that day, I've seen a tall black figure, not all the time either, just random moments, and I feel like it's still the same one from the closet, following me. I'm going to share a story with you about the time I spent living with my dad and stepmom. I'm now 25 and married, but the story took place from ages 4 to 20. The first time I got nervous in my new home was when I turned 6. I was helping my dad cook dinner and he had asked me to go get my sister as it was time to eat. I waddled down the hallway and went to open our bedroom door, only to hear her talking and giggling. I opened the door slowly to see her brushing her doll's hair while talking. Thinking maybe she too had pretend friends, I asked who she was talking to. She answered me smiling. The little girl from the closet. I took it as she meant the doll, because that's where she put them all. Regardless, I told her food was done and went on with our evening. This proceeded to occur for a while. A few years even. I just ignored it and my parents didn't believe me until they caught her doing it and suddenly I wasn't so weird. From talking to no one, my sister progressed to sleepwalking. Usually she would go to the bathroom and just stare at herself in the mirror, eyes wide open but with no one home. My dad is an incredibly light sleeper and would wake up when she passed his door and tell her to go back to bed after a while. She never once would say a word. I mentioned the sleepwalking because by age 10 I was terrified of the house. Every night I would cry when I stayed there. I told my dad, someone is walking the halls, or dad, someone's in the house, I swear. He would tell me it was my sister, or just the creaking of an old house. Little did I know once we moved out, he would come out to tell me he heard it too, and it scared him as it wasn't my sister. Time passed and I moved into my brother's old room. My dad built an extra room in the basement and my brother moved down there so he wouldn't have to be next to his annoying sisters. So when I was moving into the room, I was cleaning out anything he left, sweeping and generally cleaning what was needed. Well, I did the closet last. I opened up this tiny closet and on the top shelf was a globe I figured it was my brother's so I went to ask him and he said it wasn't. I asked my dad and it wasn't his either. I went to my stepmom, and she said she had found it when we moved in. She had forgotten about it, not really caring at this point. I put it back. I didn't use the top shelf anyway. For a long time only little things would happen, like being watched, giggling, footsteps following you, and a general sense of unease. Maybe an open cabinet and the offhand a door slightly swinging open. Until I was 18. I moved in for the summer because my mum was out of state at the time. And I remember one night I heard a door open as I was nearly asleep. Figuring it was my dad doing his goodnight check, I stayed in my loopy state. I felt something brush my hair back and then walked away and the door closed. I brought it up at breakfast and said... I know you still check in on us at night, Dad. And he looked up and back down at his paper and said, No, I don't. You're old enough. I laughed and told him I heard him. I had felt him touch me. He stopped and slowly looked at me. My smile slowly fell. I looked back at my dad, now feeling nauseous, only for him to tell me, Lauren, I wasn't home last night. I left right after dinner for work. You know that. I felt ill. Someone or something had touched me, caressed me even. It hadn't felt evil. Loving, almost longing even. My dad left and my sister took me aside. She told me she had a dream last night where she found a guy in my room standing over me, looking at me longingly. She said she got the feeling I resembled his wife and it saddened him. So what did we do? We set up a camera. We videotaped for weeks until one night we heard and saw my closet door slightly creep open until the screen suddenly went black and the rest of the video was blank static. I never felt quite right in that room. 
but that made me feel like I was an animal in a zoo for something or someone. After that, I take more notice of things like my dogs refusing to enter or stay in any room, or they'd sleep on top of me, and I'd wake to them snarling at night. My lights would flicker, and my radio would suddenly cut out. Luckily, I moved to college shortly after, and due to family issues, we moved while I was gone. Seven years ago, I lived in a two-story farmhouse. It was built in 1908 and was both large and old. I was packing clothes and putting them in a small, unused bedroom. I was wearing my MP3 player, and the last time I checked, it showed three-fourths battery. I was on my fourth or so trip, and was hauling a load of shirts on a hanger. When it occurred to me, the closet was empty too. Perfect, I'll just hang them back in there. This closet was almost a second room. It had a short, glossy wooden floor. The area was thrice as long as wide. The hardwood floors, the lacquer still smelled, even though I'm sure it was fresh a hundred years ago. And I ducked fully inside and thought, this is a weird little place to be. Suddenly, the music doubled in volume and changed to something that wasn't music. It was like rapid nonsense, fast electronic babbling, and it scared the hell out of me. I flew straight out, and my player was dead. I'm a pretty rational guy. That MP3 player would sometimes show more battery life than it actually had. It had done that before, and maybe the sounds were some sort of malfunction before shutting down. I don't really believe in ghosts, but I'm telling you, it shocked and frightened me to the core. My skin felt electric for an hour, and I never felt comfortable in that room again. When I was maybe six or seven, I got this Mario Kart RC car for Christmas. What happened was that we got one of Mario, but when we tried to use it, it didn't work. I was pretty sad, but my mum said we could go back to the shop and get another. So we went and asked for a replacement, but all the Marios were out of stock. They did have a Yoshi one, so we got that one instead. The cart actually worked, and I was happy that at least I got it over nothing. Everything was fine for months. I would always leave it in my wardrobe, but in the morning I would wake up to it right next to my bed. And I didn't know if this was a prank, because my mum told me one night she heard the sound of it driving. She went to go check on it and the RC remote was on the top of our wardrobe, completely out of mine or my brother's reach. And it wasn't even on. It was just the car that was on. So she turned it off and went back to bed. But the Yoshi toy kept appearing by my bed. We always shut the wardrobe and when the toy appeared next to my bed, the wardrobe would still be closed. Eventually my mum gave it to her boyfriend and it would stay on a shelf just staring. Nothing ever happened with the toy being at her boyfriend's house, but whenever I looked at it, it would just haunt me with the memories I had with the toy. This isn't the only experience we had, as my mum had other stories of us being asleep and hearing footsteps in our room, or some sort of shadow entity in the hallway. But this is the one that I experienced myself. When I was around 18 years old, I was asleep when I was startled awake by a very loud high-pitched screeching, like a five-year-old girl shrieking at the top of her lungs. The way my room was oriented had the top of my head facing my closet, which was always open, and I sleep in pitch darkness and silence. Immediately, I jumped out of my bed, laying on my side, and I wound up in like a push-up position and moved my eyes to where the sound came from, which had me staring straight into my open closet. I stayed frozen for a few seconds, asking myself what in the world was that? I must have dreamt it. It sounded real though. I guess it was one of those halfway, half dream things. I had moments in the past where I'm half asleep and would hear my name or family members' voices say something and startle me. But it had always been during that half sleep and starting to dream, but still aware of your surrounding state you can sometimes be in. But this was different. This got my adrenaline pumping, so I was wide awake and shook, but I had to work the next day so I calmed myself down and told myself I needed to sleep. 
Not ten seconds into calming myself and closing my eyes, it happened again exactly the same. A super loud high-pitched scream, like a five-year-old shrieking bloody murder at the top of her lungs. This time, though, I'm not anywhere near asleep. I had just settled back down. There was no way I was dreaming or hallucinating. In that moment, I unlocked my superpower. Turns out I'm able to move at the speed of light. As I was out of bed, through the closed door and down the hallway so fast, my feet didn't touch the ground. Out of the bedroom, down the hall, and straight to my mum's, where I tell her that there's something in my closet. I'm a grown adult man, rubbing into my parents' room in the middle of the night, in nothing but boxes, shouting there's something in my room. My mum and I went back to the room, and looked all around the inside of the closet, but there was nothing. And I would sleep with my bedroom door open, and the hallway light on for a solid week after. I was working with my older brother at the time, so the next day at work I asked him what kind of animal would make a loud noise like a little girl screaming. He apparently thought I was telling a joke, because his reaction to the swing in his gaze over me made him shout, an ostrich, followed by holding a big grin on his face in anticipation of the answer. My response? Then there was an ostrich trapped in my room last night in the closet. Then I told him what happened, which would prove to be a mistake, as I spent the next month getting hazed by him and other construction workers about the little girl tied up in my closet. It never happened again, but freaks me out every time I think of it. I told this story to various people over the years, and no one has ever come up with a good explanation. Hey guys, it's Mort here, and thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed tonight's stories from the closet. I always appreciate your feedback and comments, so if you have something to say, I'd love to know what. I'd like to thank, as always, my members and patrons whose names are on screen, and if you'd like to join their ranks to get some cool perks and exclusive stuff, you know what to do. But for now, thank you all again. There's more videos on screen if you are so inclined. Stay awesome. I'll see you in the next one.